Hi, good morning and welcome back. I would like to thank you for joining me here again on a Tuesday morning with our Facebook and Instagram Live. Um, I'm Suzanne. I'm a horticulturist here at Rogers Gardens and this morning we are going to be discussing how to take care of your garden in June and what you should be doing to um, make everything just pop. And I'm going to, I'm kind of going to start this one. I'm going to tell Sarah, who does our Thursday videos, happy anniversary. She's off on a trip right now, 20 years married. So, woo, good job. <laughs> um, also, um, I just want to talk about a customer who came in yesterday, kind of helped me round out what I was thinking about what you should know about um, gardening in June. She brought by a picture of her neighbor's garden and she said, this is my neighbor's garden and this is my garden and we have almost the same plants why does her garden look so good and i said it's because she's taking really good care of it um not to say that my customer wasn't but her neighbor was going the distance adding that extra little oomph that will actually make a difference in your garden and so um, the thing that we're going to talk about a lot is making sure that you have good fertilizing practices um it cannot be said enough if you want to have a big beautiful bursting garden fertilizer is going to be your best friend it makes a huge difference you want to have color you want to have growth you want to have it to fill in and look lush and beautiful fertilizer um, we have beautiful organic fertilizers here we have a whole line of them I talk about them almost every week Sarah talks about them and so just come on in call email ask your questions but we um, we just have a great line of fertilizers for different things but we even have an all-purpose that if if you know if you're not really ready to jump in and get specific fertilizers just use that all-purpose use it regularly and you are gonna have the most amazing garden I promise. Um, the next thing that we're going to focus on a little bit is mulching. The weather, although today is June, we have June gloom, which has, you know, obviously followed our May gray, but the weather is going to start heating up. And so the best thing you can do for your garden is to mulch it. You want to have two to three inches of mulch all throughout your entire garden for a couple of different reasons. But first and foremost is that it looks beautiful. Second, it's going to help with uh, evaporation. It's going to keep your garden, uh, hold that water in longer. You can save 30 to 50% on your irrigation bills if you mulch well. So, I mean, why wouldn't you want to do it? It makes your garden look beautiful. It helps you save water. And the best thing is that it helps uh, suppress weeds and nobody likes to go out there and weed their garden. So mulch is going to be just amazing and you can use cedar mulch or redwood mulch you can even just use a good soil amendment on top of your soil if maybe you feel your soil is lacking feel free to get a bag of the malibu compost and kind of sprinkle it around your garden with some of those worm castings that we discuss every single time we do a video but mulch 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 it's going to help get you through the summer with less water less weeds and a more beautiful garden I can't emphasize it enough. Um, certain crops like um, avocados, which um, part of the June tips is that you want to plant your avocados now. It is a great time. They're a tropical plant, like a subtropical plant, so you want to keep those roots really cool. So mulching around your avocado is super, super good and um, will help it establish itself really well this month. Um, the next thing that I want to tell you about is pest control. I'm sure you've all been noticing, you know, with spring come the aphids and then come the other bugs and this bug and that bug. And so um, get out there and take a look at your plants, see what might be um, kind of attacking them. We are full blown in aphid season right now. And so um, there's a couple of things that you can do. You can squirt them off of the hose daily. It's going to rinse dirt and dust and mites. Spider mites come out about this time of year, but aphids as well. If you're out there looking, checking and spraying off your um, plants, you're going to have less of a problem. Also with fertilizer and worm uh, castings, you're also going to have less of a problem with pests. So preventative measures will help you get through the summer. But if you do have aphids right now, a good light insecticidal soap will help you. If you have a bigger infestation, you know, those worm castings and the soap 
And then if you have things like um, white fly, you're gonna use an oil-based soap. But um, try and strengthen your plants right now so in the heat of the summer when they might be slightly weakened, the pests don't attack them. Um, the things, things that you might wanna be planting right now if you haven't started tomatoes, it is not too late. We are just getting into the heat of the summer, so you can plant your tomatoes now. We have a nice assortment. We have cherry tomatoes and mid-sized tomatoes and beefsteak. So feel free to plant them now. Get them in before it gets too hot because uh, they're gonna transplant nicely and they'll start growing and producing tomatoes. And who doesn't love a fresh grown tomato? Uh, you can also start growing corn right now i would say no later than now to start your corn get it in the ground if you want it and uh, make sure that you plant at least 12 to 20 plants because they need to pollinate each other you'll be working on shaking the plants to get them to pollinate but um corn now and thinking ahead if you want to have pumpkins for halloween now is the time you need to start planting your pumpkins now start uh, mulching underneath them and getting it ready for the big event which is either lots of little tiny uh, pumpkins or that really giant one that you can put in front of your house um, really no later than the first of july for pumpkins to go in you can still put in green beans you can put in herbs it is a great time to get a lot of basil in the ground right now up until this point basil was kind of a hit or miss thing depending on the weather but now that it's really going to be warm enough plant that basil plant that uh, cilantro coriander and all of those kind of tender herbs because it is warm enough now um, you can also put cucumbers I'm looking at my list here cucumbers you can start your winter squash um, put those peppers in it is um, a lot of people think that because they didn't start super, super early, but you forget we have so much heat coming ahead. It's going to be great for vegetables. The only thing that I would say is, you know, um, if you're going to plant lettuce or uh, tender spinach and things like that, you're going to put it in a cooler area of your garden or try and uh, buy the heat resistant varieties, either by seed or starter. Um, there's some like mescaloon and things like that that you can do for warmer weather. Um, but that's that's about it for vegetables. Just feel free to, to grow them. It, don't be intimidated. Um, some of the other plants uh, that you might want to think about ahead, because I'm thinking like sometimes we'll get into fall and people will say, oh shoot, I wish I'd grown you know a pumpkin or something. But also, if you're into irises, you might want to order your irises now um, because you're going to do them for fall planting. Start thinking a little bit ahead for the future. And um, also, uh, when you're fertilizing your plants, you want to take it easy on those natives. If you have things like native milkweed or some uh, ceanothus, things like that, you don't want to fertilize them now. They're going into their summertime as our most succulents. So although you're going to continue watering a little bit, you are not going to fertilize them. Um, a lot of aeoniums will kind of shrink up a little bit, and it looks like maybe you're not watering them enough, but that is just their nature. In the summer, it's not their time. The, uh, the late summer, kind of winter and spring are the best times for succulents. So that's about it. Um, do we have any questions? Yes, thank you, Suzanne. The first question is, can you fertilize through the mulch or push the mulch aside first? Um, if you're going to mulch, I would say fertilize first, but usually the fertilizer will work through. If you're using a liquid fertilizer, obviously it's going to pour through there. You can also use that compost tea, spray it directly onto the plant, um, but it'll always work its way through with watering and everything. Okay. What about lettuce? Is it a good time to plant let or grow lettuce lettuce it it's going to it kind of depends on where you live if you live at the coast you can pretty much grow lettuce through the summer in a in a cool area lettuce has a tendency to bolt really quickly if it gets too warm and so um, you want to keep it in a cool area or try and get seeds for those heat resistant varieties okay how do we deal with box elder bugs box elder bugs box elder bugs oh gosh um i would guess uh I'm not even familiar with that, to tell you the truth. I'm going to guess with an oil-based spray, but um, I can look it up later and I will answer you down in the comments. What about fruits? 
like, what about fruits? Like we what have... type of <laughs> fruits to grow, I guess. Okay, well, you can still plant strawberries and things like that. You can plant trees. You can plant your citrus if you can find it. We have apple trees and peach trees and nectarines and things like that. We have blueberries. You can plant them all, although you might not get your crop this year. You can do it, but definitely don't wait uh, until it gets super warm. You don't want to plant uh, too many things when it's super, super hot. There are very few things that like to be planted when it's, you know, July, August, September. So if you're going to plant your fruit trees, get them in now. All right. What do you recommend to fo for, sorry, for insecticidal soap? Uh, we have a really good safer. That's really, uh, it's nice. It's mild. I think we even have a, um, I think we have two different insecticidal soaps, but I know the Safer is a good one. We have it as a ready to use spray and as a concentrate as well. Okay. How do you get rid of pesky aphids on your tomato plants? <laughs> oh, on your tomato plant. Yeah, it's, it's so funny. You can squish them. Um, you can put gloves on and squish them. <laughs> you can blast them off with a hose. You want to be real careful of the fruit and the flowers, of course, but also an insecticidal soap. Use the mildest thing that you can to see if it'll work. But again, those worm castings, using them two or three times a year in the soil is going to help your plant strengthen up against aphids. It's going to make the plant uh, not be, uh, not taste good to the aphids, so. Okay. How can you get rid of earwigs? Earwigs. Oh gosh, those are such a pain. Uh, they're kind of, um, we have a sluggo that is, um, it's called sluggo plus. So it's for snails and slugs and for earwigs and pill bugs. And so you can use that. Um, it's, it's an interesting thing. Um, also I just kind of want a side note. Um, I noticed a possum on our security camera the last few nights. And it's funny because, uh, possums are your friend. Possums eat tons and tons of bugs. So although they may seem kind of weird to have in the garden, they are a super beneficial little being critter thing that's out there, not a bad thing. So keep them out there to eat things like earwigs and snails and slugs. Okay. How do I prevent ants from climbing on citrus trees? Oh, okay, ants. Ants are an interesting thing, hard to get away from, but ants are usually an indication of aphids. So you want to treat the aphids. The ants will climb into the tree and they will actually protect the aphids and the white flies and things like that because they farm them for their poop basically, <laughs> um, for the honeydew, uh, which turns into black sooty mold. Uh, the ants really love having aphids there, so they'll do everything they can to make sure that they are safe. So what you want to do is get rid of the aphids and you will not have ants in your trees. Is it okay to plant artichokes right now? You can. It's, it's uh, not probably going to be the best year for an artichoke, uh, but next year, yes, it'll be great. Okay. When should you plant sweet peas? Sweet peas, the flowers, uh, or sweet peas, the vegetable, the flowers, uh, they're kind of done. You, you might still have some in your garden, but we usually bring in our super fancy, um, <clears throat> excuse me, sweet peas around the end of November. Uh, those are the ones that Steve Hampson will hand select, and then we bring them to a grower here, and then we start selling the little starts. Um, because they're daylight sensitive, they don't really grow until, I think it's December 21st, when the days start getting longer. It's a really cool thing about sweet peas. Um, some of them are not daylight sensitive and they'll bloom a little bit earlier, but that's a whole different topic that Steve's probably going to handle. But um, sweet peas, usually end of November, you can plant them then as well. But we also sell the starts starting in November and usually through about March or so. What's a safe way to keep snails away from your plants? Have a possum. No, <laughs> just kidding. Um, two, two different things. You can use Sluggo, which is a really safe um, plant, uh, snail product for pets and children, but you can also water differently. So mulch will help, but watering deeply less often, as long as the top of the soil is dry, snails and slugs don't want to go on it. It's as long as they have moisture to keep them going. So whatever it takes for you in your garden to keep the top of that soil as dry as possible is going to help deter slugs and snails. Okay. Back to the sweet pea comment. It was sweet pea flowers. Sweet. Yeah, that's what that's yep. what we talked okay. about. Yeah. Okay. Can the carrots be planted now? And if so, which seeds are the most nu nu 
nutrient dense variety sorry oh nutrient dense yeah, gosh nutrient i dense. don't know which carrot is the most nutrient dense but yes you can plant carrots right now you can do a lot of things carrots beets radishes everything like that it's a perfect time to put them in the ground because uh carrots are better put in the ground than transplanted um so i mean i would imagine that they're all super super good and much better for you obviously if you pull them out of the ground and eat them then if, uh, from a a store but the stores are good too okay thank you <laughs> and seems to be the last question what do you do when you can't get rid of white flies on hibiscus that is a great question again those worm castings uh, i have um i always tell the story that my son had uh white flies all over his hibiscus it was terrible and i just told him get worm castings blast them off with a hose every two days for two weeks and eventually the worm castings will work if it's really really bad you can use an oil-based spray you want to smother those white flies but definitely use the worm castings as well because again it works through the roots through the plant and makes the plant not appeal to the white flies it's it's an amazing thing also fertilizer the stronger your plants are the better they're going to fight off those bugs all right that seems to be all the questions today. Thank you, Suzanne. You're welcome. And I'd like to just say a happy birthday to Bimmy, who is here. <laughs> she's she's sometimes asking questions of me, but she's just celebrating today. Thank so you. happy birthday, Bimmy. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, she does so, so very, very much for us in our marketing group. Um, on Thursday, uh, we're going to have Steve Hampson here. He's going to surprise you with our flower of the week. And I also want to mention, um, because it's June 1st, we're switching our flower of the month. This month, it's Vinca's. Last month, it was Marigold. Gold, so it's buy two get one free and that's whether it's a four inch plant or six packs so we have a beautiful assortment of vincas over there that we're loading onto the tables we're ready for you but anyway that's it, it for me uh please go to rogersgardens.com you can shop online you can pick up here in the store or have it delivered we also have facebook and instagram and our youtube channel where you can subscribe and listen to us all day long <laughs> okay thank you very much for joining us bye